Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Welcome to day one of 30 Days of Gratitude. Thank you for joining in for this series of devotional lessons. We appreciate you being here and being a part of it and studying together with us. In this lesson, we're going to talk about gratitude motivated by salvation. We're studying about gratitude in the life of Paul, and Paul's story is very well known to us. Before he became a Christian, he was a persecutor of the church. Acts chapter 8 records that for us, and even into chapter 9, we find out that he was seeking to end Christianity. He had authority to arrest Christians, and his desire was, was to wipe them out. He believed he was doing the will of God, but the truth is he was an enemy of God. He was a sinner. He thought he was doing right, but in fact, he was doing wrong. Even though he was sincere, he was sincerely wrong. And on the road to Damascus, as he was on his way with every intention of arresting Christians in his desire to bring an end to this, what he saw as error and heresy, he was granted a vision, a vision of the Lord Jesus. And he was told to go into the city, and there he would be told what he must do. Ananias came to him and told him what he must do, what he needed to do, and Paul immediately obeyed. His sins were forgiven, washed away by the blood of Christ when he did what Ananias commanded. Acts twenty two sixteen. he said, Now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. Acts chapter 9 tells us that Paul arose and was baptized. He did exactly what God commanded him to do. His sins were washed away by the blood of Christ. He was forgiven and he began his journey, his life as a Christian, as a preacher, as an apostle. But the simple fact is that the appearance of Jesus on the road to Damascus could have easily and justly could have been an appearance of the Lord to announce the doom of Saul. He could have been coming to announce his condemnation of Paul and therefore Paul's judgment. But the Lord came with mercy and with grace and he offered Paul a chance for redemption. Now Paul was still wrong and he was still under condemnation, but he had a chance to change. If he would listen to what God said, and be obedient to it, his sins would be forgiven, and his life would be renewed. He could start again as a servant of God in truth. And that's exactly what Paul did. The mercy of Jesus, that he didn't destroy Paul. He, he didn't uh, end his life there as punishment for his sins, but he offered him a second chance, a chance at forgiveness and a chance at service. That became the motivation for Paul's gratitude. Listen to two passages of Scripture where Paul expresses this very idea. He says in 1 Timothy 1, beginning in verse 12, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. He goes on to say that this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. You see, Paul understood who he was. He was a sinner. He was an enemy but he received mercy. And because of the mercy of God, because of the grace of Jesus, Paul gave thanks. The Lord had forgiven his sins. And not just forgiven his sins, that would have been wonderful enough, but not only did the Lord forgive his sins, but he says to Paul, not just that your sins are forgiven, but because your sins are forgiven, your past is, is, is washed away, and you are useful to me. You can be a servant of mine. It's not just that you're forgiven, but I can't really use you or do anything with you. 
you're forgiven and you're mine and I want you to serve me. And Paul was so thankful that his sins were forgiven, but also that he could be of service to God. He said in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 9, For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Paul said, I was a sinner. I was an enemy. I persecuted the church. But God's grace made me what I am now. I am what I am by the grace of God. Therefore, I give thanks to God. And therefore, I give my life to serve Him. And I'll labor more abundantly than anyone else because I'm so thankful and so grateful to God. You see, gratitude is motivated by salvation. Are you saved? Have your sins been washed away by the blood of Christ? Listen, if, if you do exactly what Paul did, you'll receive the same blessing that he received. He was told to arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. That's how you call on the name of the Lord. You do what he says. You say that he is Lord by submitting to his authority and his will and his power. And what he commands us to do is to believe in him and repent of our sins, confess him as Lord and Christ, and to be baptized for the remission of sins. And if we'll do those things, our sins will be forgiven. But not just that our sins will be forgiven, as wonderful as that is, but we become servants of his. He'll use us to honor and to glorify him. Our lives become channels of gratitude. We express gratitude to God, and in turn, we help to bring others to him. What a wonderful blessing it is to be a Christian. The lesson is that if your sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus, if you have been saved, you must be grateful. Grateful for your salvation, but also grateful to be a servant. Gratitude motivated by salvation. Are you saved? If you are, are you grateful? Are you grateful for it? And not just that you're thankful that your sins were forgiven, but you show it in your life and in your words and in your deeds. Here's an exercise we can do to help us focus on gratitude. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 15. It's the verse that each of these daily devotionals begins with. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Memorize that verse. 2 Corinthians 9.15. It's short. It's simple. Commit it to memory. And then as you go about your day, when, when troubles come, when life begins to get difficult, when you start to get frustrated and angry with your coworker or angry with your spouse or angry with your neighbor or just frustrated with, with life and with traffic, and whatever it is, repeat that verse. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. And gratitude will well up inside us and help us to see that those frustrations and those problems and those difficulties are not nearly as bad as we tend to make them. We have so much to be grateful for. Learn this verse, memorize this verse, and repeat it over and over and over throughout the day. Do that today. And do it again tomorrow. And do it again every day whenever things get difficult. Oh, we have so much to be grateful for. The salvation that comes through the blood of Christ and the fact that when we're forgiven, the Lord, in spite of all of our mistakes and all of our sins and all of our faults and our failures, He still wants to use us in His service. He's so gracious. Let's be thankful and show it in the way that we live our lives. Thank you so much for joining and being a part of this devotional lesson. I hope that it blesses you. Remember to go to our website, thewhitehousechurchofchrist.com. There'll be a link below in the description. You can find the daily handouts for each of these 
uh, lessons, these devotionals, these exercises are repeated on there so you can uh, remember them and have them with you. And uh, of course, there are more things that we can study together found on those pages as well. We appreciate you being here. Look forward to tomorrow when we can study together again about gratitude in the life of Paul.